It was the evening of October 1st, 1969, when I first smuggled several hundred pages of top secret documents out of my safe at the Rand Corporation. The study contained 47 volumes, 7,000 pages. My plan was to Xerox the study and reveal the secret history of the Vietnam War to the American people. The FBI was trying to find out who gave the New York Times a copy of the Pentagon's secret study. How, like a, like a thunderclap, you get the New York Times publishing the Pentagon Papers, and the country is panicking. And we are joined by Daniel Ellsberg. He ignited that firestorm in 1971 by leaking to the New York Times and other newspapers a top-secret study of U.S. decision-making in Vietnam. His story is the focus of the Oscar-nominated documentary you just saw a clip. The most dangerous man in America, Daniel Ellsberg, in the Pentagon Papers, it is now out on DVD. All right, Daniel, what do you make of Julian Assange? He has said that the nearest analog to what WikiLeaks has done is your release of the Pentagon Papers. Do you agree? I see the same. I see what he sees. There hasn't been a, an unauthorized disclosure of this magnitude since the Pentagon Papers 39 years ago. I've been waiting for it for a long time. There should have been the Pentagon Papers of Iraq and a lot of other places. And I wish there had been uh, Pentagon Papers of Afghanistan earlier than this. But uh, better late than never. The war is still on, but Congress is just being challenged now to vote $33 billion more dollars to a war that's cost $300 billion so far in a war where the opponent we're fighting is as str stronger than it's ever been before. So the analogy to the war I was helping to expose is very close. How do you respond to the White House assertion that this leak puts U.S. forces in danger? You know, the people who put U.S. forces in harm's way, 100,000 men and women, are uh, in Afghanistan, are the last two administrations, but particularly this one, uh, the last administration, particularly this one, with a decision to escalate the war. Uh, it's, I think it uh, takes a lot of, I don't know what to say, chutzpah, effrontery, for people who made the reckless, foolish, and I would say irresponsible decisions to escalate a war that I'm sure they know internally is as hopeless as these new revelations reveal it to be. And yet they're preferring to send men and women into harm's way to die and to kill civilians and others in a war that I think they perceive is, is endless and hopeless, rather than to face the accusation of generals that they have, these politicians have lost a war that the generals claim is winnable. They claim that very foolishly. Sure. I'd say that was exactly the same as the boss I served in 1965, Lyndon Johnson. He didn't want uh, General Johnson of the Chief of Staff of the Army and others to resign if he didn't give them enough of what they were asking for. I think That's President right. Obama has made the same terrible error. Julian, uh, in June, Daniel Ellsberg told the Daily Beast that he believed you, Julian, were in some danger of bodily harm. Do you believe that, Julian? you think you're in danger? Well, we've taken certain security precautions to make sure I'm not in uh, danger of bodily harm uh, or our other volunteers or employees. Um, but there was a, a, a period early on where some private signals coming out of the U.S. administration were not too pleasant. Um, the, pub the public messages were, were not so bad. There, there does seem to have been a, a merger in the private uh, and public rhetoric. Uh, so what we're hearing now, at least um, last week, just before this material came out, uh, is a bit more reasonable. Uh, we're having quite a few surveillance events. There was, a, according to uh, a Canberra Times national security reporter and, and former diplomat, um, a request by the United States, a formal request uh, to my government, the government of Australia, uh, to uh, try and, and seize or, or, or um, aggressively yeah. in, investigate uh, us uh, in Australia, that uh, request was uh, largely rejected. Uh, that, so there is um, some sort of significant pressure coming on us as an organisation. However, I think it's been seen now uh, in part uh, thanks to uh, statements like the one from Daniel uh, that it is not uh, politically 
uh, feasible to interfere with us at a high level. Julian, thanks but for joining us. We'll be calling on, on you again. Oh, yeah, Dan, Dan, you're staying with us. We'll have you come in. Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, we thank him for being with us. Uh, has national security been compromised? We'll talk about it next with the panel, and Daniel Ellsberg will remain. Don't go away.